has made its way over here for Cinderin to cast with his co-caster, Suns fan, Team Spirit, Team Falcons. 1-0 start for Falcons here, and the panel picked Spirit to win game one. They lost. They now say this is the biggest outdraft that they've seen against Falcons. Do you agree? I definitely agree with a lot of the points they made about what... I, I, I will say straight up, I, I agree, actually. Let's make it simple. I think Spirit's lineup is better against Falcons than vice versa, but it's always going to come with the asterisk that is the previous game, right? Like, it's not... It, it clearly wasn't enough for them to get ahead and do well in lanes um, in the previous one. I think the primary difference here is that the carry-to-carry -carry matchup is better. Oh, 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 Laurel. But Stormhammer start, collapse there with a good rebuke. Good rebuke. Arrow. Will connect on to Collapse. As Yatoro wants to fight, Impale comes out onto three from Mira. He's on the back line. Amar is going to get first blooded. Mira gets credit for that one. Panel is talking about how hard this game is for the Centaur. Snake King looks to be next. They'll give this one to Collapse, though, eventually. <laughs> Yatoro stayed around and watched. <laughs> That's funny. Um, hard game I mean, for Amar, and it just got harder. Yeah, so the Centaur lane is obviously what they spend a lot of time talking about. Curious to see how the Puck versus Lina matchup is going to go. I think this time around Melreen will probably do a bit better in lane than he did against the Death Prophet, but we'll see. Um, and despite struggling in lane last game, he still found massive impact. Mm -hmm. Nice stuns here from Laurel to harass. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be a bit cautious with counting Falcons out, even if things don't go too well early on, because they seem to have a very good eye for how to make comebacks. Um, small sample size, of course, but, you know, they just won a tournament as well. Yeah, yeah they're definitely playing at a very high level. Um, but I, I, I will agree that Spirit's conditions are just exceptionally good here. I really like the way they targeted Amar in this game in particular with the way they picked and banned uh, the bands in the last phase of the slaughter and the viper to protect your toro and identifying what was even left for Amar. So they countered the tiny in lane as a in case that was a core flex. Still doing some good damage here. Life Stealer is a pretty trash level one hero. Yeah, so. and this is kind of what Centaur has to do early on because yeah. once this Life Stealer has a few levels, it is so hard to lane. You just right click with yep. the little frenzy, and Amar won't have much else to do than die. But how much can crit help out in that regard? I mean, he has the toss, he has avalanche, but there is the rage eventually to come for Yatoro. And there's also the fact that this is a good bat five lane, right? You're playing against two melee heroes that will be expending their stuns largely to try to... Oh, boy. Well, that is oh very boy. well done. He can't keep him up there. but Can't, but forcing out a TP, pretty nice. Toro is relatively low right now, but gets the Rage level 2. Just to, I mean, a lot of players would not do that. But showing some respect, does not want to give up a kill to the likes of Amar. How much Bat 5 have we even seen, actually? I feel like most teams we've seen play at 4. Yeah, it's mostly 4. Um, so that's an interesting approach here from Spirit, putting that onto Miposhka this game. But yeah, as mentioned, it is a good lane for it. So I think Batrider has some shortcomings as a five compared to four. I think the, the net worth on the hero is really valuable, but the game is good enough. Should be fine. Lane so far going pretty even. Yep, in the mid lane, you can see Laurel sitting on 15 and two, 11 and three for Malrain. So a little bit in favor of Laurel so far again. Amar is leading the way on CS so far, Cinderin. Yeah, the first few levels for Centaur are fine in this lane. Gets really bad at level three and four on the Life Stealer. He gets more points in the Frenzy when he gets Rage. So he's going 1-1-1 one, one, one here. He wants that defensive point just in case. And it's, this can get even more awkward for Falcons if pulls start coming out. But I mean, so far so good, definitely. And perhaps if you have this good of a start on Centaur, you can still float the lane. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, we'll see. Really interested. So he does get one in Retaliate. And I do wonder 
how much kill potential they even have, he might just end up putting more points into that so that he could eventually go to the jungle and actually get the farm off his lane support leaves. That leads the opportunity for crit to get the Ava toss into the hoof stomp. So a good amount of damage done on your Toro as Snake King was taken out by Collapse. Skeeter left alone for the time being with no mana. <laughs> We'll pull shenanigans here. We'll take out a couple of creeps as a result. This is the kind of stuff that, oh, nice fake out there. Yotaro forced to use his rage, so that's gonna be on cooldown for a bit. Man, Crit was thinking about an Ava combination there, but. Oh, they're taking the gate, so Yotaro's actually alone, but they don't know for sure yet. Blood Grenade, okay, they seem to know. Toss is there, Hoof Stomp as well. Double edge to follow Yotaro with the Rage, but he dies. So Falcon's mega aware that he was alone, and they fully committed, and it works out. Yeah, and Sven is already off in the jungle. So just a clean play call from them. They knew this was coming. They don't miss a beat. Sven obviously has the luxury of being able to do this super early, so even if you are rotated on, you can get a plan B at the very least in the jungle. Radiance middle tower is under Snake attack. King. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to keep these creeps in a state where Skeeter can clean them up. Let's take tons of damage in doing so, but does a good job overall. Skeeter's back in lane now. Malreen. Look at these creeps just all over the place. Naposhka will force Malreen back into his triangle. Crit has to re aggro creeps, but Laurel coming from the other side. He has Laguna Blade as well. He gets a little bit of vision. It's like the LSA Laguna will be acquired or applied to crit instead. Not dead yet, though. The Flame Break brings him back. Couple more right clicks will be enough. 4 1 advantage for Spirit. They had a bigger lead last game at this rate. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly. But as mentioned, it is a very different type of game lineup-wise, specifically because of the carry-to-carry -carry matchup. And this time around, Laurel not playing the Death Prophet, but rather playing something that's more assassination-based, more artillery. And he has amazing front line for him. He has the Mars, which is one of Lina's best friends. They go way back. Um, the Batrider is nice to play with. You have one of the best heroes to just burst in a lasso. Lifestealer can front line for you. So. This is a very good Lina game in terms of the lineup he is with. Snaking will come in and arrow the Siege Creep. That will stop the push, but Tower is already so low that Laurel will probably find it anyway. No, Malreen denies it here. Is Maposhka. Seven minute wisdom. Hoof stomp from Amar into the Avalanche. Maposhka might just get out though. Amar did go for the max out of. Okay, he actually does get Stampede. Oh, nice try on the, the double flame edge. Break. Crits there with the slow. Blood grenade on top. I missed. Yeah, they don't have a ton of damage because of this build from Amar, but they get the kill nonetheless. Yeah. But this lane has gone way better than we we're anticipating. Top net worth is Amar in the game right now. Yeah, I am. I'm impressed. I didn't think they were going to do it this well. I, I will say I, I'm not shocked that Centaur can lane quite well here, but for him to just straight up win the lane by about a thousand, that's crazy to me. Malreen, Stunlock, Laguna Blade. Phase shift is there, snaking with the arrow. Might be enough. Malreen very slow though as Laurel continuing the chase now. But won't dive any further. Toss back on top of the coil, but Poshka is the one that's punished. Crit is the trade. <laughs> Spirit getting very aggressive, but it ends up just being a one for one. I wonder what the mindset is for Laurel behind the 1 1 4 build this game. Um, a lot of the time we see Lina's get more points in Dragon Slave if they're playing a range versus range matchup. But under obviously, the puck will escape there. There's so little damage coming out from Lina's spells aside from the Laguna that rather insignificant. Are likely will try to force out the rage here with a hoof stomp as crit is shadowing. Uh, that's one thing that was changed with this matchup. Uh, the tiny versus lifestealer is before you could avalanche, 
and you could still rage because the stuns wouldn't last long enough. They were all uh, layered, essentially, yeah. spaced apart a bit. But that's been changed now, so it's effectively just an AoE stun. True. Crit. Oh, bounty room will still go to Maposhka. Falcon's not able to do anything about it. And the build from Yatoro is going to be the Armlet Radiance SNY, which has been kind of the standard we've been seeing as Yatoro. He's hitting like a wet noodle right now. <laughs> oh, uh -oh stomp miss. Yeah. That's one of the nerfs to that spell is the AoE. Yatoro actually thinking about chasing, but we'll back away. Coil, though, only on to one as Crit comes in. Focus is on the Lina. They snap the Coil. And Laurel, uh, Arrow does miss this time, but it matters not. Big kill onto Laurel for Team Falcons is pretty much even up the net worth discrepancy. A prize. Ten minute power rune here. Melrine will find the Amplify Damage rune. Do you think that's ever going to catch on? Nope. Okay. Absolutely not. Arrow, not dodged. In fact, just eaten. Crit will get the toss back. Mira is dead. But Collapse coming with the first arena of the game. And Snaking will be the recipient of that. Crit, TP out. Not going to make it. Ooh, close though. Oh, now a, a stack for Spirit. That's a fat one. That's some nice cash. What kind of build is Malreen going to go for this game? It's going to be the Witchblade. Do you go Witchblade into Maelstrom sometimes or no? Um, I don't, I don't think so. There isn't really, I mean, is there a point in this game to go Maelstrom? No. Just curious. I didn't even check if it was good or not, you know. I, okay, I'm not going to make a blanket statement that you The don't. only reason that I'm asking is because I want this centaur cart to work, but it's, I'm oh, really okay. stretching. All right, that is... Because it would be for a, a right-click puck, not right. so much a Sven. Let's start, let's start from the beginning. We'll centaur by Axe. The answer is no. So <laughs> then you can follow up with your puck question after if you want. But. It's Auro. He's going to get ganked here. Stampede. There's the waning rift with the coil. Toss back will... Not break it because they have enough damage anyway. Crit gets credit for it. Toro dead. Falcons just executing at such a high level in this series. A veil of Discord on Amar. We'll be going the blink and then finishing the Shivas after the fact. He's only 100 away from that blink. You can see collapses top net worth in the game. So both off laners just crushing the laning stage. Yeah. The prize is mine. The thing here, though, is the carry differential is starting to be a, become a problem. Skidder is two full levels ahead of Lifestealer. He's going to farm a big stack now of Ancients. So while the Atoro may have a better matchup this time around, the laning stage just does not go that well for Spirit in their safe lane. He's 0-2-2 zero, two, and two against the Sven's 0-0-0, zero, zero, and zero, the Merlini Dyer's stat line. Is under attack. Triple fire. He will now almost have the Echo Saber and Mask of Madness. Sven is not inherently a terrible hero against Lifestealer. No. Lifestealer just has good matchups in this game in general, but if Sven is ahead by a few thousand net worth, you can overpower Lifestealer really fast. So I think it is concerning for Spirit that Safe Lane went this poorly. Nice rage Mark. timing. Get gone on. Lasso is there. Can he TP out? He can try. Spirit oh. will cancel it okay. just in time. Does require Close. three members to take out Amar, the raid boss. But that it, opens up the mid lane for Falcons. He would have made it out. It was actually important Collapse was there. And Collapse will now be mid. Infested. Arena. Oh, the orb. The orb is used. They're going to go for it. The coil comes out. Spear is there. Here comes Yatoro with the right clicks. Maureen. Able to dodge out spells, get to the high ground, but there's the arena. Should be enough. Okay. Indeed it is. Damn. Collapse with a double pump fake on the spear to try to bait face shift, and Malreen just didn't fall for it. Yep, more pump fakes very, here. Very clutch from both sides, but the arena will clip him in the end after the escape. 
Uh, Marine definitely not looking too hot on the net worth this game, but saw in the previous one that despite him losing the lane to Death Prophet, he was still able to combine with his teammates very well. And that is something that Falcons have basically in the same way as last game. Their skirmishing power with two or three heroes, and even the team fight is there. A billion stuns. They have killed Lion. Tank the gank. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Malorin will get an invis rune as well as Poshka just jungling away. Okay, it won't be the finish off of the Shivas, it looks like, for Amar. It will be Eternal Shroud instead. Great item for Centaur Cinderin. You can activate the extra magic resist yourself with double edge. The beauty of mm. hurting yourself. I love myself. Self-flagellation. Underappreciated under art in the modern world. You're also a fan of self-flagellation, but we'll keep that for another day. Actually, also an underappreciated art in the modern world, yes. <laughs> Here's a smoke from Spirit. We'll try to get active with Collapse as well as the two supports. Going to Yotaro's lane, as assuming that the next move from Falcons will be coming in that lane once again, and they would be kind of right. They're just a little bit off on the timing, so the question is if Falcons will... Now that their Moonlight Shadow is expiring, end up walking into this trap or not. Crit yep, will crit. find Mira. Gets well. instantly hexed. No avalanche to come. Spear. They have the damage. Mira with a stack now for her finger. Nice defensive play from Spear there. That's, that's, uh, that's good. They could have ended up costing them their carry if they weren't ready for this rotation, but they end up... I wouldn't say they made the first move there. Crit kind of walked into them, <laughs> but... Immediate response from Falcons here, straight into mid. Yep, and the arena comes out for the instant hoof stomp as well onto Collapse. But Skeeter, he's the one that's super low, trying to run away. Flame Break will bring him back into Death's arms. And just like that, Spirit with the counter initiation trying to defend that tower. They get the spear now. He will be. Illusory Orb. Oh, the lasso though, into the Laguna. Finger and Laguna available at Spirit's disposal to burst these heroes down. So two cores dead for Falcons. And now Maposhka as a position five Batrider with a 16 minute blink, not too shabby. Yep. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Spear into Impale. And another kill goes the way of Spirit with a 4K lead now. Impressive stuff how fast they responded to mid. It's Despite losing tiny bottom, Falcons are like, okay, we can still get something out of this in the mid lane, just try to put the pressure, but Spirit were immediately rotating over and killing off the Sven as fast as possible. It looked for a moment like Skitter might escape, and then it wouldn't have been too bad, but they got on top of him. Now Amar actually might... Oh, a bit slow from Collapse there, uncharacteristic. Yep, crits in the vicinity as well, though. Flame break. No stampede. Impale, nice avalanche from Crit. Avatos, in fact, the arrow will not find a connection. It's now Maposhka is the one on the run. Mira still shadowing, though. It's turned to a very awkward fight. So the coil is going to be used just onto the lion. Instant hex. Maposhka, avalanche finally finishes the job, and Mira eventually gets run down as well. So, good response from Falcons. Does take a while, but they get both supports from Spirit. And they almost have a blink on Mira as well, so they're going to have tons of ways. I mean, they have yeah. great infest bomb targets. Like, literally everyone can be an infest target in terms of just initiation. I'd say Lina is maybe Radiant's not the best. Tower is under attack. But aside from that, yeah, that's true. the other three are good. Are Don't think we're going to see Laurel get a dagger in this game. I think he's just going to play backline the whole time and not try to initiate. On the toss back into the avalanche. Yatoro's in a lot of trouble. The arrow finishes him off, but here comes Collapse with the arena. Nice sidestep from Skidder there. They get crit to start this out, but the Moonlight Shadow Radiant's will provide cover of darkness for the likes of Falcons. So ends up being a net win there for the Falcon side. Radiant's bottom tower has Collapse still hunting, though. Yeah, he smells blood in the water up here. Skitter will know now. You good old Watchers. I feel like we never talk about the Watchers. They're we actually, do not. They are more Radiant's important than you'd think. In a lot of situations. 
wonder how the game would play if that if they just if weren't there. they didn't there. exist? Yeah, like how teams would map control, if it would favor the winners or the losers of the oh, game. That's the Blink Dagger reveal, but the Coil to try to counteract this. Maposhka, well, not able to well. find the kill on the Snaking as a result. All right. BKB, double, double BKB for Spirit now. Huge timing. If they can make a good smoke move, maybe get a I Roche. I think they wait for Yatoro's Radiance, though. He's that's got fair. the Sacred Relic. Yeah, Looks yeah like it's I mean, on. he has it now. Yeah, so. basically has it. Yeah, this is lining up really, really well on the side of Spirit to, to make a power play. This is about as strong as an item timing can ever get in a game. All three cores getting big items at the exact same time, more or less. If you were to find a good smoke move around bottom, you could maybe get Roche, or you could get the Tower plus Tormentor, which we know Spirit love to do. For now there are split out, but here comes the Infest. Onto the Bat Rider. Never mind, it was onto the Mar. Mar already used the blank. Inside the arena he goes. Stampede's not going to get you out of that one. Yeah, Roche is spawning, or Roche is bottom in 15 seconds, and Mar's dead for 40. There is a possible play here. Lena can kill Roche relatively well with the type of lineup she's with, so they could think about that. I don't know if they're going... If, if they want to do it, they have to do it immediately, and they're not going to. So, rather looking to maybe do some damage to the bottom tier one. Malreen will get a damage rune, and Skidder will get a tower rune. That's a powerful one. Maposhka, though. Ooh, instant avalanche from crit, basically canceling out the last, though. Oh, my goodness. They were ready. And looking for more, since that god strength is still up. Laurel. This would be big. Oof. Not quite ready on the dagger on Tiny. One second off. But they're going to still go for it. They force the BKB out. It's going to cost Crit his life. Now really Skeeter really on the run. As Malreen is spotted on the high ground. It's off the waning uh, rift. The coil to try to get away here. Illusory Orb as well. Phase shift should be fine now. Although Collapse can try to continue the chase. Amar ready to... Help out his comrade if needed. I was thinking, what's the difference between comrade and compatriot? Is, there a, is it just synonyms? Wouldn't know. Okay. Don't speak you. English. Yeah, we've noticed. <laughs> speak British, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yet you refuse to do the accent. I don't know why. You're just going to be disappointed. Sometimes it's better to not do it, you know? Yeah. You know, when people build up the hype around something so much, you can only disappoint. That's true. And the fact that they build hype about, around it at all is troubling. Mm -hmm. There was no reason to draw attention to this whatsoever, but Dream League just loves to dig up old clips of a time past when I was young and beautiful and had aspirations in life. Oh, Skitter is in trouble. He is super dead. Huge kill for Spirit. Yep. Falcons were smoked up. Okay. No. Laurel. Go quietly. Lost back. Coil. But Collapse still has the arena to work with. Laurel does fall, so that's a huge kill for Falcons. Ends up being a one-for-one one to start things out, but Maureen dying does not make it worth it for Falcons. Crit will be next. Isn't it fascinating how the map is so big, but it feels like the teams are always close? Yes, <laughs> it's true. That's not how it felt the first six months or so, at yeah. least, with the big map. I think we need the map to be even bigger. Like World of Warcraft, we have to look like to be able to get to another region, you have to load in. <laughs> need to start having quest givers around the map. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is. Oh yeah, what's a quest? So they give quests? Yes. Okay. What else would a quest giver be? I don't know. It could be sexual, honestly, but we'll get to that another day. Yeah, that's very World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing it's known for, a very sexual game. Well, to some, maybe. I mean, you do spend a lot of time in your room alone with it, so... <laughs> Some nice role play in the Gold Shire in Shannon. You would fit right in. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yep. All right. Um... Hmm. So, a couple of big kills here for Spirit. I don't know if they can open up a path to Roche just yet. So we're probably going to be looking at one in the top half of the map, which is concerning, because the average time will be pulled up now. That's true. And you are obviously very much in favor of that. Don't... I, 
Honestly, it's quite beautiful to watch these teams play each other, and the thing that really stands out to me the most is, as weird as this might sound, it's just the reaction time. Like, the players are so quick. It's almost like they know where the enemy team is at all times, and uh, not only with their spell casting, but also TPing, making counter moves, immediately punishing the smallest mistake or minor movements around the map, any information. Got to really be on your toes in these games. Not much is given away for free. Collapse. Collapse with the infest. Toro inside. Oh, kind of miss. misses, and that'll break it up. All right, the spear missed more. Yes, it did. That was a just in case someone's trying to do something weird. Yeah. Or he was tilted. Up, oh, Skeeter. Pushka spots him. Moonlight Shadow, though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. He'll get away as a result. Is he trying to get his Echo Saber back? Is that what he's building here? Yeah. Okay. Dyer's middle tower 400 away, then. Attack. Has the Ags. Does that dispel anything uh, this game that matters a lot? Dyer's There's no Yules it. right it now. It doesn't dispel anything. Huh? It doesn't dispel anything, I think. Four staff. I guess if you catch the mid force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just strictly getting it for the mobility. Right with the smoke on the side here. Yeah. Falcon's trying to get the jump. Collapse has been on top of this as Laurel. They'll break an avalanche onto both heroes here. And the Bat Rider is dead. Collapse is next. Laguna Blade upon Skeeter. Able to run away as the coil will snap on Yatoru. He's getting kited by crit. Laurel able to TP out. Yatoro left to his own devices. One versus five. Who wins this? The five. This is what I mean. Like, both teams oh, know here. what's coming, right? They, they know where the fight is going to happen. They're set up and they're ready. And Crit just initiates blind. He just blinks in an Athos and just goes for it straight away. It goes so fast. Look, he's going to smoke break, so he knows that they're here. Zero hesitation. Just straight in there. And a really great fight for Falcons. They get three kills, of which two are cores. And they get you good old Roshan in a moment. Yep, so Aegis and Cheese will be on Falcon's side this time. I assume that Cheese does not need an instruction manual. Wait, is this the first or second Rosh? Oh, it's the first Rosh. I'm so used to being so much earlier. All right, so just that would have been Aegis. very early. Yeah. All right, what, what's, been... the, what's the average time here on Roche? It's got to be down to 58 now, surely. Yeah, probably. The jumping fish, a classic. Yeah. Arena it will be used with Snake King. Oh, it's going to stay alive a little oh, bit longer. Oh, he missed the rebuke. Very matter. important. I think Lion didn't get a finger stack because of that, actually. Yeah, that took it quite a while. It did matter a little bit. Oh. It's... No, I was I was just gonna update it. I was gonna say I have a theory that whenever it's twenty two zero zero they don't show it when you ask. <laughs> that would be amazing. That it, oh it would be a, just a purely inside joke. So what, what's the point? It's not an inside joke. It's saving me money. I'm invested <laughs> in this. So you have something on the side then, huh? I may have side made a hustle. We may have made a side bet. You never know. I mean, I did promise on stream that if they kept it from 22, even if it were that, I would take them to dinner instead of you. Yeah, so. but you know that's not going to happen. Hmm. Cindern is definitely not going to follow his word on that. I'm known to lie a lot. I'm a very dishonest person. Yep, that's right. That's why you got into Dota. That was a lie, you see? It's kind of meta. Oh, you're so good. Yeah. You should play Mafia sometime. Yeah. Oh, Mira? He has Aegis. Yeah, this will be free one though. A free one right off the bat. I think Spirit, TP coming yeah. in. Spirit I don't just think... hard disengaging, just taking that freebie. Very nice. Yep. A bit of a mistake here from Malreen. And it feels like this is a game that he should go. Yeah, he's going Lincoln's. The hex is just the worst. Blink, instant hex. Yeah. No time to really react. There is a world where you could buy Eon Disc even because of how bad the game is for Puck in terms of getting burst. Because there's also Lasso. So there's one way of looking at it is can I block the key spell that I need to block? And if yes, then it's fine. Against Lion, he can just blink, mana drain, hex you instantly, right? Like the Lincolns is not a guaranteed protection. Whereas with the Aeon Disc, you're positive you're going to get your spells off. So right, we Yatoro. saw a bar by an Aeon Disc on Mars the other day, which is a very rare sight. Yeah, that is 
um, strange. And we know for a, as a matter of fact that Malrina and Amar think in the exact same way. They grew up the same way. They play the same heroes. They have the same interests, which is playing this video game. And all chatting. All chatting. Yatoro is building the item that I've been Dyer's craving, Cinderin. The Aghanim Scepter. Yep. So this does a lot of things. I think, Radiant namely, obviously you can infest killed. enemies, but it disarms them, Radiant which against Sven is incredible. Is yeah. Goes through BKB, I believe. I think so. Pretty sure it does. Yep. And you heal a lot faster inside, and it lowers the cooldown. It just does, it does everything. And it increases the range, I believe, the cast range of the spell itself. Yeah. So absurdly good Ags that has been buffed so many times because it was so bad initially. Yeah. It, it needed a lot of love to even be picked up. Radiant so. And I can't say in hand on heart that it is still one of the best because there are a lot of really good scepters. But in given matchups such as Dyer's this one against the Sven, it's obviously Sven going to be attack. amazing to have. Uh, but you're always... The thing that's tricky about it on Lifestealer is I feel like this hero inherently just really craves damage items, right? So you are getting it instead of an AC, for example, or a crit. Yeah, but you're doing damage to them. You are. You're but doing, you're what is it, like three hits while you're inside them? It's Something not like much, and Sven has Warcry. So in that matchup, like, your Infest isn't going to deal much damage, but it's going to cause confusion. It's going to buy you time for Rage to come up again. The Disarm for your team is particularly what's important. Oh, my. He really wanted this one. Oh, my. I Do you think that was a misclick? No, he wanted to show off the golden aspect. It wasn't even a rhetorical question, actually. I think he... Oh, there, okay. There's a real possibility that he was worried. Oh, okay. Like, he was going for the rune. He might have got had second uh, second thoughts about it because all the Falcons were missing and he just wanted to protect the rune. I don't know. I'm going to say no, because he's infested. That's true. Uh, Collapse will I mean, get not, the shard. I feel like he could still just die even though he's infested. If he gets jumped by the whole enemy team out in the middle of nowhere with no backup except the Lifestealer to help him out. Except for the top net worth on their team. It's yeah, but he, he can't come out and disarm the Sven because he jumps out of the Mars, right? So he would have true. a cooldown. This is true. Yeah, it does make the offensive infest a little bit more awkward. I mean, it does lower the cooldown, so maybe you could I use sort of the right? Defiant. When you have eggs, it's 20 Yeah, seconds. so if you have like an elongated fight, it it could yeah. be good. We're going to see the offensive version again. Oh. That is if they find any opening. Collapse still has cooldown. 15 seconds. Smoke. Oh, just barely outranging it, actually. Yep. Maposhka, though, he's spotted. Hoof stomped. Destroyed. A better death. Could buy back and TP to the tier two as the fight will start with Collapse. And Yataro teaming up onto crit. They'll get him. So it's a one for one to start things out. Coil from Malreen comes out as Skeeter. Superman mode oh, yeah. gets instantly sheep though. But Mira does fall in the end. Laura with the BKB run away. Yataro will have infest relatively soon. Well, I thought that was going to potentially end really, really poorly for Skeeter. He didn't BKB on that initiation, but was right to save it. Spirit were not able to counteract that with the Lion Hex, nobody could follow through. All right. They're still going to look for something yep. 3v4 here. And Fest Bomb again. Snaking with the Leap Shard. I mean, the other aspect of this Ags that's interesting is the fact that you are hitting for free. So it's all about getting pure damage, like, not literally pure damage, but just like raw damage yeah. items, like a Daedalus, because you can crit Radiant on it, mm -hmm. which uh, I think he's going Radiant Basher, Radiant which also Tower. same idea. Attack. Yeah. Oh boy. Laurel have stopped. Not the force staff is there. Collapse. They're able to surround the centaur. Amar. Laguna bladed. Gleipnir destroyed. So bit off a little bit too much. I'm not sure what the plan was there. He didn't have backup, did he? It was just him and Marana. They can't kill Lina. Yeah, Snake King uh, AF or not AFK, but retreated pretty much immediately. I. Was there some miscommunication there? Because I didn't see the Puck or the Sven nearby, and I think Centaur and Marana can do everything perfectly, and they still lose 2v1, if I had to guess. So, it's a bit surprising to see. Yeah, Toro picks up Open Wounds Shard now, so very, very good against Centaur. Pretty good against uh, Sven as well, but yep. any type of percentage-based 
damage against these strength heroes is going to be very valuable. I guess the Nemesis curse as well, which I guess is nice with the eggs, because you're, like you said, you're oh, that's true. invincible, so the downside to the item doesn't really exist while you Of course, you're... we have yet to see the offensive infest once. Yep. And probably won't for the rest of the game. Yeah, probably so just got so it for far, this axe has not been worth anything. Well, that's not true. I the... guess he got one more infest off on Mars. Yeah. yeah I, well, I what's the cooldown I... normally? Isn't it like 40 seconds or something? Maybe even longer. It might be 60. I can't see that. Okay, I have to go out. Radiance Middle Tower is under yeah, attack. No tooltip issue. Very even game here in game number two. We're going to see the infest 50. bomb again. So 50 to 20. Okay. Yeah. Pretty damn good. Collapse. Ooh. Warcry to give the extra move speed. TP's canceled by Snake King. But he just rejoins the old fashioned way with Sagan. Collapse on the rest of Spirit. We'll just take the Tier 2 instead. Both teams playing at such a high level. Yeah. It's almost as if they have the same vision as us. <laughs> it's so insane. That's... And now the high ground attempt. Fortifications popped. Breaking some trees with the LSA, Malreen. Trying to push out a little bit. He changed. Oh, he actually did go the Eon Disc. So oh, this is a this is a game where nullifier becomes really good now for the life stealer. Takes off war cry as well. Yep. True that. And again, infest bomb offensive capability. I guess it doesn't take off war cry when Sven gets shard. That's true. Undispellable at that point. Um, which. It will eventually happen, but obviously Skidder is not going to make it a priority. I feel like it's still... You know, you remember when... Uh, I think it was Katomi that was playing for Sven a lot with Entity. They were running this strat with Pudge Sven, and Sven just rushed Shard as a support and gave his Pudge like 20 armor. Yeah. Um, I still think this Shard is honestly good on carry Sven. It's a lot of value for your team. You just give them 6 armor aura, yeah, right? Not bad, not bad. So... I mean, this is not the particularly greatest game for it, but maybe a little bit underappreciated in some games for Sven to buy this. Roche is up in one second. This one will have the cheese as Collapse. Seems to be aware. Both teams aware again of each other. Malreen in the trees now. Mira. Impale will miss. There's the initiation from Amar. The Infest Bomb is there. The Coil onto several heroes, but the BKBs are popped. Arena only onto Amar now. No oh, follow up, but finally, Laurel comes in. Yatoro and company. Mira does fall first to the right clicks of Malreen. Amar will be the trade. Now snaking on the run, but the Avalanche by Crit. Tossed onto the Lina, but the Arrow will miss, so no true follow up. They do take out Maposhka, who buys back now. LSA onto two. Spear onto Skeeter. There's the offensive usage of the Infest, and that's going to lead to the kill for Yatoro. Snake King's going to get open wounds as Malreen focusing on Laurel, but doesn't have a whole lot of backup now. LSA is going to connect on the Tiny in the meantime. The right clicks will suffice for Laurel. Wow, I cannot believe Spirit won that fight. I actually think they were so far behind because. They're getting these buybacks out, which are obviously, obviously going to help, but Skidder never BKB'd. Hmm. They, they, okay, I really want a replay of this, because if you're looking at the position of the heroes, I hope we're going to get this, but let's first see if Malreen can get out of here. I think they're not going to... They're not even going to go for Roche. They want to force out these buybacks instantly. I don't think they will. Now he's, he's thinking they're Roaching right now, but now he's going to see that they're knocking on his door. Yatoro and Fest up again. Has the Basher on the way. Tower goes down. Fortifications up again. Will they use it on these racks? I don't see the point. Okay, they're actually going to back away. Yep. Now it gets a little bit interesting because now they're not guaranteed to get Roshan time. I think. Yeah, the other heroes are going to group Skeeter. up instantly on the side of Falcons. Are we just going to see a second Roche off potentially here? Could. They don't have a smoke, do they? 
they haven't used it. I'm just gonna walk out normally. Oh, they find the initiation. They find two initiations, in fact. And that'll lead to two kills in all likelihood. Both supports dead for Falcons. That's gonna be the buyback, though, as Amar comes in with a Superman Skeeter. That's a lot of damage being applied. Yatoro is dead. Collapse is dead. Laurel as well. All three cores for Spirit take a tumble off the back of one buyback. Incredible execution from Falcons, and this should lead to the Roche for them now. This is, <laughs> wow. this is effectively how I thought the previous fight would play out. I don't know if we still have the replay. We're probably going to get the one of this fight, right? So they jump on crit and on snaking at the same time. They kill snaking off. Crit will survive for a little bit with the Yules and then ultimately get taken out. But the main difference in this fight is that Skidder gets to BKB jump in and swing three times. Um, in the prior Roche fight up top, Skidder never BKB'd. He was like caught in awkward limbo and then he got chain stunned by Lina into Hex and ended up dying. And that was after Spirit were kind of... They were really caught in the Roche pit, right? In that earlier fight. I know I'm referencing already, but I are uh, referencing it a lot despite being like three minutes ago at this point. But that was the most uncharacteristic mistake of Falcons I've seen, I think, in this tournament, that they didn't con convert that fight to a major win. Now, they do get it later down the line, and they should be happy for that, but they get this opportunity. Now they're going to... This this is why the Axon Sven is so, so crazy, right? Is that if he just keeps his cool, waits for any hero to be out of position, he has so long initiation range and just blasts them and opens the fight wide open. And credit to Spirit in the previous fight at the pit for even identifying and finding a way to win that from that position. It is very, very difficult. They did manage. Now they will be fighting into Ages and Cheese, though. Let's see if Amar knows how to use the cheese. <laughs> like, uh... Yeah, initially, the players are a lot better at using that one. Yeah. Getting so, uh, good value with the thickness that Amar has. It's like the equivalent of cheese usage to the banner uses we're seeing according to you is to cheese as soon as you take damage from a neutral camp. That's right. That's it's not happening. <laughs> In this initiation, Laurel oh into boy. BKB. Yep. They force that out. Can they get out with Crit's life? No. Very quick reaction. If he gets a toss back there, that is a disaster. But Laurel's fast Stampede on the for the getaway on the rest of Falcons, knowing that Crit can't get back in this game. That's effectively a dieback on him. Yeah. By the way, Ghost Scepter on Amar. Very unusual to see that on a Centaur. Yeah. But I he mean, I mean, he back in the day, maybe E-Blade was a thing, but uh, he's getting it just for defensive. Well, if you look at how the fights are playing out, he's initiating and he's taking tons of focus from the Lifestealer and the Lina. So I can see it. Oh, Skeeter. Aesthetics cap BKB TPO. Ooh. Lasso in range. No lasso in range. Very close. Yeah, and this, I feel like with all these items that have been coming out from Falcons, you got Yules now on crit, of course. You got Eon Disc on Pug. This has to be Nullifier next for Yatoro. What is he building? You'd think so, right? It has to be. It's going to be AC. I, I, it looks like he's going to finish the Abyssal, which makes sense. But I think you do need Nullifier. As Team Spirit are going to finally get this melee rack, so one set for them. Falcons are fine giving that up. One lane is not the end of the world here. As Laurel now has a Satanic. So Daedalus, Gleipnir, Satanic, Pike, BKB, Boots of Travel. He He's more or less maxed out here. Doesn't have much room to grow. But yeah, this, this game is dead even. And uh, it's not just about the gold, it's about like the, the opportunities in the game. It's just about who gets the right initiation and has the angle. Um, I, if I had to give the edge to someone, it would probably be Falcons, even without the Aegis and Cheese, specifically for the reason you mentioned with the defensive items. I feel like if something is going to be the X factor, it's the fact that initiating for the side of Spirit, they need to get through one more layer on specific heroes that they could want to go on. So Falcons is a little bit more straightforward. My god, Laurel is farmed. Now he's going to get the Shard. Yeah. 30k net worth on the Lina. Not bad. Yep. So how does he improve his build? I mean, obviously he can get Moonshard. He's going to go for Wind Waker, it looks like, and that's 
that's when this gets absolutely crazy and kind of completely unpredictable for both teams in fights is when the Wind Wakers start coming out. It just, everything just descends into complete chaos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can't even counter this item. This is Wind Waker, it looks like. And that's, that's when this gets absolutely crazy and kind of completely unpredictable for both teams in fights is when the Wind Wakers start coming out. It just, everything just descends into complete chaos. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. You can't even counter this item necessarily with Nullifier, because if you're BKB'd, you can't get Nullifier'd. So, depending on the hero that has it, it's a full-on guaranteed save on yourself mm -hmm. if you're BKB'd. And then you can start theory crafting the hard counters like Chronosphere or Black Hole or whatever, but even then, your teammates can... can still Wind Waker you, right? Tier 2 tower taken out. The Collapsing Company. In the cover of darkness, the smoke still up, looking for someone to pick off. Obviously, the puck is very difficult with the Eon Disc. And obviously, the Aegis, so they don't want to expend too much regardless trying to take him out. So the cheese is passed on to Crit, apparently. But the BKB there Radiant for Amar. Shadows. Double Arena available for a Collapse as... See the Moonlight Shadow now from Falcons as Collapse is spotted. Trying to force out his BKB, they do so. Now trying to back away is Maposhka. He's infested, gets the lasso off onto Skeeter, but zero follow-up whatsoever. Looks like Spirit now on the run, but Collapse ends up getting taken out. The Stampede giving extra move speed as Yotaro jumps out. Malreans, Eon disprocs. Yotaro attempting to TP out, will be fine. Maposhka likely will be chased down eventually here. Forced that to the low ground, trying to TP out, but it's not to be the gem drops to the deck. Two dead for Spirit with no buyback, and now Falcons can try to get the racks of their own. You can't break formation this late. That's just a flat out mistake from Spirit, right? They're just not they're not connected. Falcon are playing super tight and you had Collapse and Meposhka out far away from two members of their team. Sure you have an infested lifestealer, but I really get that Yotoro doesn't want to jump out of that, because that would have been a terrible fight for him. Yeah, Mira. Trying to keep things at bay here is Malreen, has to use his BKB, he's gonna get a pistol blade, but there's a force staff to save him. Rack's still alive, but again, still too dead for Spear for quite a while. Falcons don't know there's no buyback, so they would be way more aggressive here. That is fair. But they might buy the information. If they go on Laurel here, it's... Oh, okay. Avalanche on the mirror, but the Glimmer Cape to keep him alive. Yules now for crit. Finger of Death is there, the Coil onto two, the Stampede to follow, Mira is dead, Laura looks to be next, double edge, right clicks, it's enough. And out comes the Lifestealer, Yotaro left in a 1v4 situation, doing quite a bit of damage, has the open wounds of course, finally Bobak comes out from the Batrider, and now Falcons want to kind of retreat a little bit, Lasso onto Skeeter, getting extremely low, Warcry won't save him this time. Down goes the Sven, but along with the Rax, of Any Team Spirit, bash, Amar no able to TP out successfully. Arena from Collapse will find one residual kill. No buyback for the Sven on the Falcon side now. Ah uh, yes, the 1v4 defense we all ex ex expected from Yotaro. There no surprise whatsoever. And there's a double, or <laughs> the, there's a damage rune yep. in the bot. Oh, I hope we get a replay of that. He stayed alive forever. Oh, Collapse takes it, okay. And then Miposhka bought back and came in and they ended up overpowering the Sven and actually holding. That looked like the game could have just been over. Yeah. I think Lina didn't have buyback at the time and Lion didn't either. Now they both have it again. I don't know if it was time or gold that got them across the finish line there, but you can see here, literal 1v4. There's no buybacks on the Batrider team. gets one there. Miposhka the gets it now. He's buyback. just tanking all four of them. Literally just... Supermaning it. And, and when Skeeter goes down, two people get buyback yep. from that kill. Damn. So now what Spirit a crazy game. trying to turn this around on Falcons. They get the tier two mid. Now we're backing away. And they know that Roche could be up in five seconds. Radiant are scanning. And it ends up being a 30-second Roche, so all 10 will be alive for this. And now it's all about the buybacks. You got three on each respective side. Yep. The Life Stealer is 2,000 away, so it's not about the cooldown. Yeah, for it's him, collapsed. it's about the gold. He finished the AC here. There's a Moonlight Shadow now from Falcons. Going to try to group up. 48-minute rune is bottom. It's an invis. Not going to change too much in all likelihood with all the sentries that both teams have. 
And Yotaro into the pit. But, oh, oh BKB uh. from Aposhka, misclick, trying to use his wards. So this will be a Roche for Spirit. Falcons were banking on the fact that it was not going to be a fast one. That's going to be Aegis, Cheese, and Aghanim Scepter, which Laurel picks up for now. See if he consumes it. And Falcons don't get anything out of that. I thought they maybe were trying to trade racks, but just weren't expecting such a, a quick respawn of Roche. And oh, the Axe was taken by Maposhka. Oh. So potential double lasso. Yeah, that there's a really good. good chance for finding that too. When you look at the enemy lineup, like Tiny and Centaur, Sven and Tiny, Sven Centaur, they're gonna they're gonna leave themselves vulnerable at some point where they initiate on the same target. Yeah. But I really think he has to save the lasso for Sven. I I don't think there's any like initiating on a support as he's done in a couple of fights back to back. I don't think has the same impact as just reserving that lockdown for the one hero that's going to kill the Lina. Uh, especially because once Skitter does go in, he will be stacked with someone, so even getting the lasso on the other target that you might have wanted regardless. So let that fight develop a little bit and look for the counterplay is probably wiser. It's a big buffer for Spirit to have this Aegis. Gives Yatoro a lot of freedom. We talked about him not having buyback. Not really that important now. That is accurate. He's going to end up consuming this Axe at some point. I mean, he still has a decent amount of room to grow. The Aegis right now is taking the slot of his boots, which he doesn't even necessarily need. And in some ways, the Axe is mobility in a way. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe not as good as other <laughs> mobility <laughs> spells, but... That's something. His, okay, Octarine for Octarine a Octarine Centaur. Yeah, classic. Gonna have, let's see, what's the cooldown on his stun now? Nine seconds. A little bit surprised. Oh, we're gonna see the lasso onto crit. Finger. Arrow is there. Malarine goes in with the coil. Falcons looks like they wanna fight his crit. He's actually gonna survive through this, surprisingly. There's a bat rider getting really low. They don't have vision, though. And Malarine already used his BKB as well. So no kills either way. And there is the nullifier for your Toro. And I think that is a game changing item if used. Yep on one of these items that we mentioned earlier. If Puck doesn't have BKB, he's in trouble. For the well, I think if you cast it before BKB, I don't think you can BKB it off, if I'm not mistaken. Am I wrong? It doesn't pierce. Yeah, but if you if you apply it first and then he BKBs. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I think even if you apply it prior and then someone Double BKBs, man. I think they can still Wind Waker. Can you? I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. It, I don't think it the definitely of didn't used to be the case. Maybe it got changed though. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, for the for the puck, this matters for his BKB disc. Um, and obviously, we've talked about the centaur Radiant ghost scepter, which he got rid of. I don't know. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> he just changed his mind. He's like, nah. Yeah. Well. Been there, done that, I guess. Yeah. He got he got rattle cage. Good enough. So what, so what are you really nullifying at this point, since this isn't there? Uh, the Sven has shards, so you're not removing Warcry. So uh, two Yules. Two Yules and a Force Staff. Sounds like a sitcom. I guess that's it? Really? Um, let's think about that. And I mean, the, the well, Puck, the puck Eon, Eon, right? It, but I only, think that's the big one, is but, Eon but again, that depends on the timing, right? If it works the same way as BKB uh, Wind Waker, mm -hmm. then... Yeah, if, if you're correct on that mechanic, then... Then yeah, not as impactful as maybe I was thinking. Okay, just one minute left. It is so difficult for Spirit to go high grounds. Falcons just keep their calm. They know that if Spirit try to go and hit a tower, they can do for go for some sort of blink tossback play with Coil. And just built the fight from there, so Yatoro's Aegis would effectively just be forfeit almost instantly, I think, when he goes up. He would have to use Rage for every single tower hit. Yep. Laurel getting closer to Wind Waker. Obviously, he wants to maintain his buyback as a, <laughs> a sneak Roche from Falcons on their own, or sorry, sneak Tormentor onto their own Tormentor because they're Get stuck in their base just for the money. Nice though. monies. Oh, Courier. 
Centaur Courier. Ooh, Rebuke will... Okay, there's nothing on it. Very exciting. Does die. <laughs> to an invisible right click from Maposhka. What was he trying to get over there? He's trying to get but in position is it for... Overwhelming Blink, maybe? No, he's going... Uh... Vanguard. Oh, he's building Vanguard? What? <laughs> Does he want a Bissell? I don't know. Huh. We'll find out eventually as the Aegis is gone, which of course means Team Spirit now wants to fight. Makes a lot of sense. Also allows Yator to have that extra slot, I guess. As long as he's not afraid of dying. Gleipnir onto two. Double Lasso is there with the arena. In addition is Laurel trying to do so much to this Centaur. Skeeter is dead. Amar as well. They still have their spells though and they double by back. Now the Coil onto two. Skeeter with that God Strength. Onto Laurel, so they do get two in reciprocation. Can they force the buybacks? Collapse of the BKB TP is fine. They have to force these buybacks, or else that is a big win for Spirit. Yep. And the God Strength, I mean, that's the one worry about Sven. You use this thing, eventually runs out, and they don't hit nearly as hard anymore. Transformation Hero, in some regards. Into the bottom lane they go to try to get the second set. Yeah, they need the mid wave to reach first. And I think they're going to be a little bit cautious for the exact reason you mentioned. No buyback on the Sven, no God Strength. If he gets caught in the enemy base without buyback, it's probably just the game over. So I think Falcons are not even going to try this in a 5v3 situation. Yeah. The risk reward just isn't it's good not enough. even 5 because Crit has to be defending. Yeah, and it doesn't even matter if you get the racks. I think a second lane is more or less completely irrelevant at this stage of the game. So what would you really be doing it for? They're just going to back off, but that... That was the moment, right? Eventually, they're going to slip up and get caught in a double lasso. And it yep. was like, ooh, Ooh, okay. Well, <laughs> Malreen has a divine rapier. So, going to put this Ags to work. Do they have the damage now? He is stacked. Yes. Which which item is he going to swap out? He can't decide. He's going to put the rapier. Oh, wait, what he already mean? did. No. It was the gem that he Never had. Mind. Never mind. Now, likely just an upgrade for the blink to go, and then yep. you backpack refresh. I don't even know. Backpack something. For another rapier, of course. <laughs> or you could go Daedalus, I suppose. Yeah, it's probably more damage, right? You'd think. All right, so this likely comes down to one more fight. Yeah. If it's within these buyback timers. I would say advantage spirit now. Just, uh, yes, for sure. You know, they, they didn't have to use any buybacks. The Roche will be early spawn is in 20 seconds. You have a very clear... It's also when you get to late game, sometimes a really big advantage is just knowing what to do. Right? And I know that's going to sound ridiculous because these players play all the time, but in super late game situations, it's very hard to keep an overview of what exactly is the best way to approach a fight and what your objective is. But for Spirit, it's clear cut. Ooh. They know what heroes don't have buyback. So they go in with an ad information advantage of if we kill Sven and Centaur, we know that we're going to outnumber them. This is a butterfly is a really good item this game. Lifestealer, Lena, yep. no MKB. Yep. And this is good. he's going to eat his eggs for Skeeter, I assume. Yeah. Uh, oh, he still has to farm up the recipe, so needs to be delayed a bit more. But this is such a good butterfly game. We're getting close to 60. I see you, production. I know. Believe me. An easy shot. Oh, Roche? Can they take this? Yeah, I have a rapier puck. Uh, but they're back scared, away. And they, with yeah. good reason. Collapse is coming. Yatoro inside. Boy, that sounded really bad saying that out loud. Is Malreen. Still Moonlight Shadowed. Uses his blink. Actually scares off Spirit for the time being. In the meantime, Crit is mid, but he is going to TP top here. This boots of travel. And Maposhka is probably the scariest person <laughs> for Falcon. <laughs> oh, Lasso already used, or sorry, Coil already used. Divine Rapier doing a decent amount of damage. There's the Gleipnir counter initiation. They got the Laguna to get this stun onto the puck. Eondis is available though. Collapse with the first arena. Eondis procs onto Amar now. As Malreen able to clean up Maposhka eventually. 
Still on the low ground, second arena to come. Yotaro taking tons of damage from Skeeter, will end up dropping. And now Mira gets off the Impale. They're stuck in this little pathway. And Laurel is going to take the brunt of the damage from Amar, but look at that damage from Maureen. It's a triple kill. Maposhka just bought back. You have to be careful. Arrow will not be there, but the damage is as the Divine Rapier working out for Maureen. Ultra kill, and now the Roche will go their way. Unbelievable. I thought he was going to get stunned. Maureen was in that initial initiation from Spirit, but his quick finger is really working out. They're just so good, man. It's it's really beautiful to watch. Probably the best game of the tournament that we've cast for sure. Oh, yeah. It's just the level of play across the board is so high. And, you know, you imagine at this point that they're probably going to be able to yes. push down mid yes. 5v3 here. Yes. Consume it. Consume it. We're going to get it in three <laughs> seconds. War Horse is there. We've done it. 59 minutes as well, one minute away from the dream. The centaur cart will be used, Cinderin. And the best part, he will not cast it until he, the game is over. That's a lie. Okay, First we'll of see. all, they made it way better, so you can actually use it just to give yourself stampede at any point. You don't have to use the cart. Yep. Cart is optional. True. Falcons now, the high ground is theirs. Only one buyback for Spirit, so this is a three versus five, not including Cheese, not including Aegis. Not including Cart, which counts as a unit, of course. Ancient fully exposes Malreen. Oh, he He's going to get stunned to the Ancient. He's dead once. Can they do it again? Snake King and company continuing on here. There's the arena. Skeeter going in really deep. Able to take out Cubs. No, gets off the Yules just in time. Stun up onto Yatoro. As Collapse will finally fall along with Yatoro and along with Spirit's chance to win this game number in incredible fashion. This team is up.